a small sailing cream vessel. Okay. So, as you know, the song we were just playing is called The Safety Dance, which is fun because the MOT requirements are all about safety. So our goal for this lesson today is to have a good understanding of all the MOT requirements for a small sail training vessel. Okay, so we're going to start off with MOT. Okay, so we're going to talk about what MOT stands for. Does anybody have any ideas of what MOT could stand for? Okay, me. Um, motor <laughs> operation techniques. Well, you're kind of close. It stands for Ministry of Transportation. So, what? <laughs> so the Ministry of Transportation is basically a section of the government that deals with anything that has to do with like boats, vehicles, things like that. So they give us guidelines about what we need to have in our boat to keep us safe. So, now we're going to discuss some of the things that we need in our boat to keep us safe. So, to start off, we're going to have a little game. So, we have a whole bunch of items here covered by our little sticky notes. So, <laughs> so you guys can come up and uncover the item. And then we're going to talk about whether this item is considered a MOT requirement or not. And we're going to talk about why it is or why it isn't. Okay? So, who wants to go first and uncover some items? Okay, Rebecca, go ahead. Paddle. Paddle. Okay, so what do you guys think? Do you think this would be a requirement or maybe not? <laughs> who needs a paddle? Mm, tell me, bro. Do I need it? Yeah, you definitely need a paddle. So, the reason that we have a paddle in our boat to keep us safe is because sometimes it may start off as really windy, but the weather can change very easily, and we're going to need a paddle to row us back sometimes if there's no wind. Okay, so that is why we need a paddle. So Rebecca, do you want to come up again? Sunglasses. Okay, so do you think we need sunglasses? No. No? No. You guys are right. Sunglasses are not an MOT requirement. So what you'll notice is, even when these things aren't a requirement, they are a good thing to have on your boat. So sometimes, you may, when you look at these items, you might think, hmm, maybe I do need those when I go sailing. But they're not a safety requirement, like governed by the Ministry of Transportation. So no, sunglasses are not, but I do suggest wearing sunglasses to keep your eyes protected from the sun, even when it's foggy. Okay, so who thinks that duct tape is a requirement? Yeah? Okay, duct tape is not a requirement. Although duct tape can be very useful for quick, temporary fixes, duct tape is not a requirement governed by the Ministry of Transportation. But sometimes things do go wrong, and duct tape can be useful, but I don't recommend this for any cracks or anything in your boat because <laughs> you definitely need epoxy, fiberglass, and gel coat to fix things like that. So, yeah, that tape is not good. <laughs> so I'm going to remove one now. So, whoop. compass. Okay. So, what do you guys think? Do you need a compass? Yes. Yes. Yes, you guys are right. A compass is actually something that the Ministry of Transportation says that you need to have on your boat. So, usually nowadays we use things like GPSs. But a compass is probably the best way to just make sure that you have good navigation. Um, I think that's pretty much all we need to talk about with compasses. But you can get little small compasses and just keep them like in a pocket you have or just keep them with you while you're sailing or things like that. So do you guys want me to do it or would you y'all? Clearly Rebecca's busy, so I'll come up. Okay. <laughs> Bailer. Do we need a bailer? Yes. Yes. Yes, we do need a bailer. Okay. A bailer is required by the Ministry of Transportation, but there are some specifications that your bailer needs to meet. A bailer must be at least 700 milliliters for it to for, for sorry for it to be called an MOT requirement. So the reason that they have that is because if you 
have like a little tiny cup as a baler and you're in a situation where you need to bail water quickly, that's not going to be useful. So the 700 milliliters ensures that when your boat is in tow or something like that, that you will be able to get the water out of your boat quickly and safely. So you may be thinking, oh, where do I get a baler? But actually, just a Tropicana juice container, if you cut the top off of it, that is considered a very good baler. So, so if you guys like orange juice, then that might be the right baler to use. So, yeah. Okay, so we only have a few more. So does Rebecca, do you want to peel some more off? Whistle. What do you guys think? Whistle or no whistle? Yes. Yes. Yeah, good job guys. We do need a whistle. This is to ensure that you're going to be able to sound for help whenever you need to if you are in a tough situation. So, when you're calling for help on a whistle, there's a certain number of sounds that you need to make to do an SOS call, just for example. So that would be two, sh sorry, three short whistles, three long whistles, and three short whistles. So if you're ever in trouble, you might want to write that down. I got it. <laughs> Alright, so if you're ever in trouble, a good way to sound for help is a whistle. And it's very useful as well. So Miriam, do you want to peel some more off? Sure. Okay. buoyant heaving line. So you guys may not be familiar with a buoyant heaving line, but it's basically just a line that you have that you must throw. Well, no, you do not must throw it. You can use it to tow things, to get things. Like, it's basically a safety requirement because it's a line that will float on top of the water and it has many different uses. So for a buoyant heaving line to be to meet the Ministry of Transportation requirements, it must be at least 12 to 15 meters long. So that's something that you probably want to write down. So a buoyant heaving line is definitely something that you're going to want to have on your boat. And it's something that I... PFD! What do you think? Do we need a PFD to keep us safe? I don't know what that is. Okay, so a PFD is a personal flotation device. So this includes life jackets, life jackets. <laughs> there are many different types of PFDs, and we're going to discuss that a little bit later, and I'm going to show you an example of a really good PFD to use. Yes, Rebecca? So do we need them? Yes, we do need a PFD. Like, this is, not wearing a personal flotation device is the number one leading cause of death on the water in any boating accident. So life jacket should just be like a natural thing, like whenever you're going sailing, oh, I have to have my life jacket on. So never, you may not ever go sailing without a life jacket. And there's lots of different styles now of life jackets. So it's not just those big red life jackets anymore. You can get lots of different colors and things like that to make your life jacket fun and fit you, fit you really well. <laughs> okay, so our last note here is you can see that, but flashlight. You guys think this is a required element for? Yes. Yes. It is. A flashlight um, is very useful, especially if you're going to be sailing at night, because a flashlight is another way that you can call for help if you need to. So these are all of some of the things that you would need to go sailing with and some of the required elements for the Ministry of Transportation. So. Now, let's have just a little discussion and brainstorming about some details about all of our items. So here we have all of our items required, listed nice on the board. So as you guys all know, we need a flashlight, a paddle, a whistle, a baler, a buoyant heaving line, and a PFD. Got it. So this is what is required for a small training sailing vessel. So in other small vessels, we're going to need more things, but we're not going to discuss those today. If you guys need any more information about other vessels, you can go to the Ministry of Transportation website. But for now, we're just going to go a little bit more in depth with our required items. Okay? Okay. So let's just talk about, um, for starters, how about a paddle? So here's an example of a paddle that we have, this is a dinghy paddle for an inflatable dinghy. So, yeah. So this is a good paddle to use. Yes, Miriam? Will it float? This paddle? Yeah. Okay. This paddle will not float, but the common paddles that we use, like wood paddles and things like that, wood paddles will float. 
And that's a really handy thing because sometimes when you capsize, your paddle will float away to who knows where. So having a wooden paddle is a good idea. I just brought this paddle for just an example so that you guys could just get a better feel of what a paddle looks like. Okay. So, the next thing that we'll talk about is PFDs. Personal flotation device. This includes life jackets and money. <laughs> so, here is an example of just like a normal life jacket. I use this one for like sail racing because this is for me personally it is the most comfortable style of life jacket because it has kind of like the wetsuit material right here and it's it just fits really nicely and it's really comfortable. So do you guys want to hold the life jacket and look at it a little bit more? Okay. So life jackets are really really important as I discussed and you can actually get a whole bunch of different life jackets now. So there's some that have two panels here and they buckle up the front. There's styles like that that just have the sides buckles and things like that. <laughs> Thank you. Something very important though when you're looking at light jackets is you always want to look at this little panel that's inside. So this little panel will tell you if your life jacket is approved by the Ministry of Transportation of Canada. So if you're going to use a life jacket out when sailing, your life jacket must be approved by the Ministry of Transportation of Canada. So whenever buying a life jacket, just make sure that you always look at this panel here and make sure that it fits, it's the right size for your chest and shoulders and everything like that. And it also, it'll tell you the weight restrictions for your life jacket, which is really important because a life jacket for a heavier person may not work the same as it would for a smaller person. So just make sure that your life jacket is made to tailor your needs. And 